Morning folks, this is Archer's Paradox and today I'm going to talk a little bit about economics. You know, the price of uh, powder and primers and bullets these days and the, the panic buying that we'd seen this past spring, it get, it's getting pretty expensive to enjoy our, uh, our shooting sports and our hobby. And I've been uh, aware of this process of uh, fire forming uh, brass uh, specifically for Ackley improved cartridges and I've been wanting to do a video on the cream of wheat method. So essentially all you're doing is um, you're taking virgin brass and you're forming the virgin brass's shoulder to match a uh, Ackley improved uh, shoulder which typically on AI cases are you know anywhere from 40 to 42 degrees. Um, so essentially what you're doing is you're taking uh, a fast burning powder, in this case I'm using unique pistol powder and I'm using an inert filler which is cream of wheat and then I'm using a, a poly fill which is just a, a filler for pillows as, as, an, you know, as a method of keeping uh, the, the powder and the cream of wheat in the case without spilling it when you chamber the, the case because obviously you're going to turn the case uh, horizontally to chamber unless you, you're going to shoot vertically in the air which most people don't. So anyways, uh, I'll go through the process a little bit. Uh, I, I had done uh, cases for my rifle. My buddy just got his 260i completed. Um, so I'm using a Virgin Lapua 260 Remington Brass. Um, and I have found, I, I got on the internet and I found that Chris Long uh, of OBT fame uh, was using 15 grains. But when I was using 15 grains, I uh, wasn't getting the, the, the sharp shoulders, so I bumped up the charge to 15.5 grains, and uh, and then surprisingly, the cream of wheat actually meters through my electronic powder dispenser and scale, which I was pretty happy. Ended up being uh, 16 and a half grains of uh, cream of wheat, but I actually fill the cream of wheat uh, almost to the top, and then I take a, uh, I think it's a 532nd uh, Allen head, uh, T-handle wrench and I pack it down, slightly compress it and then I use the uh, polyfill and uh, uh, pack, pack the case and I notice that see how this polyfill is, uh, you know, it's like a, uh, it's all wispy and it sticks out. Just carefully take a lighter and just singe off the, uh, the little ends. You, you only get a little bit, I just put this up here for illustrative pur purposes and it actually seals everything nicely in place. So that's the essential process. Uh, one thing that Chris Long did discover when he first tried this cream of wheat method is that he was getting uh, he was getting some misfires. Uh, specifically, the uh, if, if you think about what happens internally in your rifle when you shoot, um, when the primer hits the uh, or when the firing pin hits the primer, okay, it actually with in a, in a normal cartridge, normal being you've got a, a, a fairly um, medium to heavy load of powder and then you have a bullet seated, uh, you're creating tremendous amount of pressure. Uh, so what happens is the case actually starts expanding out radially and uh, hopefully grabs the chamber walls. Uh, with, the, uh, with the cream of wheat method, you know, you are going to develop some high pressures, but relatively uh, lower to uh, of a of, of a standard cartridge, so uh, what what Chris had discovered, and I'm sure maybe maybe he didn't discover, maybe somebody else discovered it, but uh, and and that's how I discovered the information on six MMBR. Um, he created a false shoulder because what was happening, the firing pin was uh, contacting the primer and actually moving the uh, case forward in the chamber. Um, so. Essentially, what I did, I have a uh, I have a Sinclair um, expanding die here, and then I just found a, a seven millimeter, which is 0 0.284 nominal expanding mandrel, and I take the the standard uh, 6.5 millimeter or 264 cases, and I expand the necks fully uh, to 284 seven millimeter. And then, just by trial and error, I take the same case, and in my uh, my uh, bushing bump die, this has a uh, this has a bushing in it, um, which I think the out the OD is two nine one. Um, I size the neck down 
So, and I, I size it, I just do this incrementally. You have to experiment. You incrementally start sizing the neck down until this case just chambers into your rifle. In my case, my 260 AI. That way this false shoulder actually is a hard stop to prevent the, the, the case from moving forward when the firing pin strikes that primer. So that's essentially the, the reasoning for the false shoulder. Also, one thing I've done differently from what Chris did, he used Crisco, and I thought, man, that's going to be pretty messy. So that's why I did some more homework and found the, uh, the uh, poly, poly fiber uh, just to pack in there. You can get this in any store. I mean, it's ridiculous. I've got enough, <laughs> I've got enough to do probably 20,000 cases, but you know, it's pretty cheap, like three or four bucks for a bag. Uh, so anyways, uh, so here's the uh, here's a virgin case, and then here's a uh, there's one that's been prepared, and then just for here's a fireform case that I just reloaded. Let me see if I can zoom in there and get some good macros on that. Yeah, let me get that forming die or that bushing die out of the way. It's kind of screwing up with the focus there. There you go. That's not bad. Yeah, so you can see, you can see the nice crisp shoulder of the Ackley Improved. And of course, the I don't know if the uh, body taper or lack thereof the body taper is discernible in the video, but. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's one of the one of the uh, intents of the uh, uh, P.O. Ackley was to uh, remove the body taper from a parent parent cartridge or the donor cartridge. Uh, so the bottom line is they're increasing the case capacity um, and obviously increasing the velocity. But I tell you what, a lot of guys uh, a lot of guys debate. Well, you don't need Ackley improved. You know, you are a, a you just take the like a 260 Remington, and you're going to be shooting your bullets just, you know, at a fine, um, at a at a reasonable velocity across the bullet range. Um, what sold me on Ackley Improved cartridges is uh, the theory that if you look at the shoulder angles, okay, um, on a 260, uh, I'm not sure if it's a, a 30 degree shoulder angle. Um, you know, some guys could probably correct me on that, but if Upon ignition, when the primer strikes, or when the firing pin strikes a primer and creates a spark, and all this powder is um, turned into uh, a hot, hot gas, okay, all that hot gas is actually, obviously, being ejected forward down your barrel. Well, actually, one of the primary causes of, uh, of supposedly throat erosion is uh, that hot, those hot gases. Um, and also, the other downside is that the cases stretch. Okay, they stretch uh, axially in this direction, particularly in the neck region. Uh, one of the benefits of Ackley Improved cartridges is um, um, because of this relatively sharp or abrupt shoulder, the uh, the hot gases aren't aren't eroding the throat as as prevalently. And also, the the huge benefit is that cases. Um, stretch minim minimally. In fact, on uh, medium to mild uh, loads, they, they hardly stretch at all. Um, so that's a huge benefit. You know, when you're paying a dollar per per brass, th this is Lapua brass, you know, it could, you know, it could get fairly expensive fairly quickly if, if, if you're a ver fairly high volume shooter. I'll show you, uh, this was my baby, and then I just uh, switched to the 260 AI. Here's my, my old my old uh, cartridge, the 6.5 by 61 Super. As you can see, uh, you can see it also has an Ackley improved shoulder. It's actually a 42 degree shoulder. Um, and I'll tell you what, I got, uh, I got, you know, typically, I've never split a neck on this case. Of course, I was uh, annealing about every third reload, but uh, after the third uh, firing, I did not trim this case for another five or six firings. And of course, I know I've, I've since uh, uh, stopped shooting the rifle. I've switched to the 260 AI for other reasons. But uh, that's another benefit. So anyways, I'm going to stop talking here. And uh, next time you see me, 
uh, we're going to uh, go out in the field and test fire some of these, uh, or not test fire, we're actually going to do some fire forming. All right, folks, I'm all set up here. I'm at uh, one of my uh, farms, our groundhog going on. So we're going to do the uh, you know, first uh, attempt at a fire forming using the cream of wheat, cream of wheat method, the cow method, as I like to call it. And uh, we'll see what happens here. All right, here we go. Fire in the hole. Yeah, that's pretty loud. There you go. It's not a, uh, the, the shoulders are a little bit rounded, but on that first uh, load you fire, it's going to sharpen those shoulders right up. We'll go ahead and uh, do a couple more here. And move my uh, little catcher right there so I don't get lost in the rocks there. Maybe we'll get a different angled shot here. All right, I'm going to show you guys just how much. Uh, you definitely don't want to do this. You know, I, I mean, I did it in my basement, but I was shooting against a, a safe backstop of extruded rubber. It's pretty loud. I'll show you how much ejecta actually comes out of the end of the barrel here. In this shot, you'll see uh, you'll see the polyfiber pillow ticking just being shot out of the barrel. So, anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. I know, it's pretty exciting fire forming, back clean proof loads. Ha ha ha! Yeah, it's cool. Anyways, like I said, uh, the big thing is uh, economics. I mean, if you're paying thirty to thirty-five bucks for a hundred bullets, and you know. 30 to 35 bucks for a thousand primers and 30 bucks for a pound of powder. You know, if you, uh, if you want to fire form your Ackling proof cases, uh, you know, that, that adds up. I mean, you're talking, you know, close to a hundred dollars if you, if you want to do a hundred rounds. And, you know, the other benefit is you're not putting wear and tear on your nice custom barrel. So anyways, this is Archer's Paradox. This is Archer's Paradox, and uh, sign it off here. Hope you enjoy the video. Remember, you guys, support your Second Amendment rights. Until next time, we'll see you later.